She's not my classmate. She's not my classmate. We just went to university together. For context, she's Nigerian. She's a northerner. I don't really know her tribe, but she's a northerner. But anyways, every holiday, her dad made it a duty. Like, she needed to come back, travel back. Okay, I also didn't study in Nigeria. I should probably say that. So, every holiday, every summer break, her dad will make sure she comes back to Nigeria. Which is like, cool, come see family, come visit. You know, it's always nice to come back. But then, what was really weird was that Every time she came back home, he takes her straight to the hospital, to the gynecologist, for them to check to be a virgin. That is crazy. That is so weird. There's something about Nigerians with abusing power that is... So I have this classmate, right? So this guy, I'm coming for you. But let me... <laughs> I'm coming for the guy. The importance of parents, guidance, and other caregivers in all aspects of a person's development cannot be um, overemphasized, right? So, from the video, right, um, you would understand that a lot of parents are afraid when it comes to issues around sex, but the role of sexual education is very crucial, as you can see. Parents are the single largest um, influence on their adolescent's um, decision about sex and parents. And um, for most parents and their children, the prospect of talking about topics related to sexuality creates anxiety and apprehension. And this may lead to avoidance of discussion in a very healthy way or, um, you know, or like seeking some level of openness when you're having that conversation, right? So um, how should parents approach sexual concerns or fears? Whichever one you might call it, some will call it is a fear, some is just genuine concern. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp, 81 a 3 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so this is interesting. Before I even come back to that girl, quickly, what was your experience like with sex education with your parents? Okay, so for me, I, I think I was just one of the very lucky ones. Um, my parents are quite liberal and um, I come from a very closely knitted family, very open. So we have conversations. My mom never truly said to me, oh, once a boy touches you, you get pregnant. I mean, for her, again, I grew up with boys, so it was easy for her to say, listen, you're a girl, there's a difference, you know, I mean, then when I started my puberty and all that, and she was just like, okay, you know what, I mean, if you have sexual relations now, like with the way you are now, I mean, you could easily get pregnant, you could, you know, but there was not, there was no scare, like, oh, a boy touches you, I mean, I really mingled with boys, I even remembered when I had my first boyfriend, I mean, the first person I told was even my dad, that's mm. how, you know, close we were, and, um, he, 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 he didn't make me curious because I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. Oh, I needed to do stuff or I needed to hide. And and like I, I could easily... Okay, so when I started having questions about sex, I spoke to my mom about it. Oh, okay, so my body is changing. Okay, what does this mean? What does... And she was quite open about it, so... You know. Yanifa. Interesting. Look at you. <laughs> 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 I never had any... Hmm. Sex education. Wow. From my parents. Um, I know my dad would always tell me not to play with the boys, mm. not to sit with the boys. When we first moved to um first moved to Lagos, we're living in this public compound and you know, normally in the afternoon or even in the night, there are benches around, people would just sit. You sit with your your mm. fellow kids. Mm. Once I'm sitting with a boy. Once oh, I hear away. daddy is back, <laughs> I will start running. Because the one day where he saw me sitting beside a boy, he called me into the house and he gave me the slap of my life. Wow. So since then, once there is a boy, my father must not see me walking with a boy. Mm. He must not see me talking to a boy. Nothing. But he never really said, oh, this is why. why? Well, I kind of like had an idea about these things because i grew up around adults so mm. i saw a lot of things witnessed a lot of things so i grew too fast for my age mm. but the one time where um i heard about 
oh, if a boy touches you, if a man touches you, um, you get pregnant, was when I was living with my aunt and one of our friends who used to come to sleep over in our house, she started her period. <laughs> so it was in our house where she started her period. And my aunt went, hmm. Now that you still seeing your period, you're a mm -hmm. woman now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If any man touch you, <laughs> the less straight, <laughs> you're getting pregnant. So there was this, there was this fear. Mm. So I think one day the, the lady left and the girl left, and when she came back the second day, she was like, ah, that when she went to one of her uncle touched her. Mm. I'm like, touch you how? So he just held her hand, and I told oh my God, are you pregnant? And she said, no. <laughs> so myself and my cousin, we went back to her aunt. She said. You lied to us. She said, what do you mean? I thought you said that if a man touches you, you get pregnant. <laughs> so Sophie's not pregnant now. She just said, no, that's A, that you see. I said, it's a lie. <laughs> so she, like, <laughs> she started laughing. So that was when we realized that, mm. oh, okay. It was, she was actually just putting fear. Yeah. And she kind of like tried a little bit to teach us about mm. those things. Mm. But she wasn't exactly clear because I also felt like she didn't want to say too much. Mm. Yeah. So that was very, yeah. 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 So yeah. She, she had this yeah. fear of saying too much. Okay, let me not say too much mm. so that you mm. wouldn't know mm. too much. There was this mm. fear and she always checked us. Mm. So this thing that this man... Oh, really? Yeah. She checked us. But not as... Extreme as going, not to, as the extreme as going to the hospital. Oh. But even her own method wasn't exactly friendly or nice it was very upsetting even mm. to us as as teenagers we didn't like it at all but it did happen once in a while especially if she traveled for a period of time and then she comes back we're just two girls and then mm. there were lots of boys. boys and young men in the house so i i, I kind of like understood her paranoia but i also wanted to believe that at that age because i was very outspoken i knew that if anything had happened i would have probably oh, no. told her but then she just felt like as kids, kids might not want to yeah. open up to tell you. So she had to do her own mm. her own checks. Mm. 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 Not my fanga. Mm. So what was, what was your yeah. experience before we now come to the topic of the day? Una be community. <laughs> Seven <laughs> girls. <laughs> when, when you grow up in a family of seven girls and uh, with a military father as your dad, you can only imagine what the setting is like. Hmm. There's no man that uh, they born well, so to speak, <laughs> who will show up in my house with all you know, confidence that they wanted to see who, who exactly do you want to see? So that was the story of our lives, seven girls, one boy, with a dad who had the double barrel, so and dogs as well. So, what, what, what do you want to come and tell uh, any of them? Yeah. So, pretty much that was the exposure that we had. My parents were quite uh, protective of us, always hammering, always talking. We never really quite got the story of oh, you they touch you, get pregnant. But the realities was that if you get pregnant, you're going to carry that pregnancy, mm. and you're going to you know, stop school. You're going to stop schooling. You're going to be responsible for each other. And the thought of that was quite scary because yeah. imagine having to leave school to care for another child. And each of us had had that background of having to take care of the younger ones when you are older, slightly older. So we have had that responsibility. And then now taking care of your own child at that age. No, it didn't sound good at all. So everybody was set straight and focused on <laughs> education and um, and all whatnot. It was so bad that even in university, when guys came to talk to me, I sounded like an old woman. It's like, don't you have important things to do? Don't you have studies? It's like, it was so weird. Like, what, what kind of child are you? <laughs> you know, talking like an older person. So yeah. really, that was as much as we got. But a lot of it you learned along the way, so to speak. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was absolutely. my experience. So similar situation, seven hmm. girls, two boys in my hmm. own house. It, it was a, you know, and my mother is like a hawk. Hmm. Like, so she would put her teeth inside if she needs to bite off your ear so you can hear what, you know. But I think um, because we are like, I did bottom pot, I'm second to the last born, you know. So it's easier. They had already used yeah. my older ones as scapegoats because they yeah. kind of flog in. Did they, <laughs> you know, you know all those scaling offense, all those things. So the kind of flogging that they will flog you, 
you will realize that uh, I don't want this kind of because me I don't like beat, don't mm, beat me. Mm, this my body is too. I don't like Mac. I don't want so. When I saw the way that you know, because again, a lot of I think a lot of parents at that time they were raising, they were parenting with fear. Yeah, you know, so it was almost like I need to instill fear in you and all of that. Unlike now that we have a lot more open discussions, but I want us to go on a break because I want to also open our phone lines to hear our audience. Then we'll now come back to that video. Um, stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we're discussing the topic, how should parents approach sexual concerns or fears, right? Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0881 You can also tweet at us at WeShowAfrica, one of the hashtag WeShow. Our phone line is now open. The number to call is 0702500 So three things that lady mentioned in that video. She said something around northerners. Um, she said that um, uh, why do people want to always abuse power? And she said, um, what else did she say? Was it up to three now? Um, well, two things. Let, let's stop at the, the fact that the girl is a northerner mm. and also is almost like abuse of power. And, and I want to say to everyone that cares to listen this is not because because again there was some argument that was coming up around the fact that this girl is what she's a girl that's why this is being done the truth is that i have sons right the only thing is that you can't test whether a boy is sexually active if there's a test please let me know because i need to I, at least i will carry out the test <laughs> you know but i mean you can't test it like the way you can go and examine a, a young lady, right? If there's any form of penetration. I remember the movie when you were talking about compound and all of that. I just watched a movie on Netflix, Wildflower. Mm. Um, it was about rape and all of that. A young girl in a compound. Yes, the guy was trying to, but he eventually did not penetrate. So when he went to the hospital, it was a hospital that proved that there was no penetration. penetration. So three things I want to say before I just move to you ladies. I've seen a lot of, I've heard a lot of girls now going into practicing anal sex because again, they want to help the parents that are parenting with fear mm. that and since he's sure you're going to go and examine, no problem, we'll, we'll, we'll try, try another it. method. Mm. You know, I've seen a lot of people indulge men through that method because of this same thing. Secondly, when you raise children like that, you are raising, um, what's it called? Hypocrites, right? There is nothing wrong because we are naturally wired to be sexual beings, right? There's nothing wrong for someone to start having those feelings. The only problem is that you're not able to control it. So um, when you raise children like that, what you're doing is that the girl, because I, I remember a classmate of mine in school then, she is a pastor's daughter. She would wear bomb shorts in school, things I would not wear. But guess what? When she was going home, she had two different boxes of clothes. She would keep this box that she wears in school with her, with her, what's it called? Her classmates. Mm. And she would take this other box when she's going back home, the one with the long skirt and all of that. So when you parent your child the way this lady described in this video, what you're doing is that you're raising a lot of hypocrites. Because guess what? They will just give you exactly, children know how to please you. Um... Then the third one I would like to say is parents need to understand that it is not every subject matter that you must be the one to train your children. Thankfully, in this present age and time, we have sex educators. They have dedicated their life's work in helping young people. The only thing you can do is be there when they are having this conversation. So don't feel the burden if you are not comfortable. Because again, we too, we were not comfortable talking about sex. So it is difficult for you that you're not comfortable to talk about it. Now, wanting to teach your child, what would you say? You don't have anything to say. So you can then just hand over that burden to the experts. Yeah. They would help you. There are books, there are different things. Age appropriate, you know, at zero to three, at four to, to seven, you know, there are books available for that. You know, instead of, going to this extreme because now 
the girl will always feel like every time I'm coming home, you know, there's there's something that will rub off wrongly. So that's why I understand this girl's uh, concern. But even she said, this is not you. There's no way to link it with power because this is not show of power. That statement that she used to round up the conversation, she just put it for me because it is genuine fear and concern from the parent. That is why a father will go to that extreme. Make sure you come home. You think it's easy to buy a flight ticket. Come home every summer, you know, and the first thing he does is to take her to the hospital. You think that is show of power? That's not show of power. That's a father that is afraid and he doesn't want his child. And given that they are northerners, you know, there are some things that are very sacred. They still, there are some things that they still hold to say, oh, yeah. you know, this thing, chastity and all that, mm -hmm. you know. So you can't just draw up conclusions. I'm tired of people just concluding conclusions. It's social media. <laughs> I mean, well, well, is there, they, well, they have their right. But let me hear your thoughts. Diola. Okay, so um, I'm going to assume that um, the person speaking is a minor. Mm. You know, you're less than 18. She did university now. She cannot be minor. Okay, so <laughs> if you are in the university, then it's going to be assumed that you're at least, well, I don't know. Young adult. You're a young adult. Um, I don't know if um, that approach, again, you're right to say that um, it's coming from a place of genuine fear. You know, whether um, cultural, whether religious, because of, of course there are sometimes religious influences as well. However, I, I think that um, it's trauma on its own for the girl. And it, it's just, um, it's also an invasion of her body. I mean, if she has to go through that every year, every year she's doing that, she's doing that, and at some point in time, there is, there is also the, the, I'm trying to look at the, the mental backlash of it. That, okay, she's had, I, I don't know how they conduct the test, but when she's even now sexually active, it may be such that maybe the way the father had painted it is such a dirty thing. She might now not even be comfortable to do, to go into sexual relations, number one. Number two, it might have some form of mental setback on her. The idea of anyone even, you know, trying on to... Number three, she can change her preference. Exactly, she can change her preference. Like, so... yeah, I'm eyeing Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> so you are very right to say that it is not all parents that are knowledgeable about this subject matter and are comfortable with okay, it, again, okay. because of the way they were also raised. So the thing is, if your fear is so, you, I, 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 I don't know. It's, I don't know. I'm, 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 I, I can't put myself in that girl's position because for me, I'm just trying to be like, ah, my father, ah, my father does this to me every year. I will be coming home again, no? <laughs> Honestly, because she can't. Do that. And again, you see, if the father is is talking to her from a place of fear, that makes there sense. is a gap. Somebody is going to speak to her from a place of love mm. to make her feel, listen, no. And that's what she will listen to. The person will groom her. Exactly, will, understand exactly will groom her. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's what she will listen to. You know, one day she just decides, okay, you know what, dad. It's not as bad as daddy painted uh -uh, it. daddy, mm -hmm. come on. Absolutely. And, and, and that's, that's where the problem starts. Jenny, baby. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very uncomfortable mm with these parental concerns and fears. I understand it, but I hate the fact that it always goes towards the women. Because when you're always trying to shield women, shield women, you're always trying to teach them, you're always trying to instill fear into them. You don't instill the same fear into the men. And that's why you have a lot of... I'm trying to find the right word you, 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 you find <laughs> <laughs> you find very questionable men mm. out there now when you talk about um infantophilia mm, mm, mm. pedophilia you talk about um men who are predators it stems from things like this because they weren't taught from infancy or from when they what started um seeing puberty when they got to their puberty age you didn't teach them these things, or you need to abstain. 
like Uwan rightly said, you would end up creating kids that are hypocrites. Yeah. And then you also create kids who would have trauma, like Jella said. I remember my cousin, even with all the checks that the mom did, every time the mom came and she asked some questions, we started to get very uncomfortable. Now, I know that personally, she didn't do a lot of checks on me because my dad is her older brother. Mm. So I'm sure she must have, hmm, will my brother like this? Let me not do this. Let me do it to my own child. Uh, my own child. And whenever she came close to her daughter and she starts asking those questions, I saw how the daughter reacted. It wasn't nice. Hmm. I, so I was having third hand experience. Seeing all of those things, it wasn't nice. And every time I picture them, I'm like, if this woman does this thing to me, I'd... no, come close to me, please. I've told you what I need to tell you. You have to take it and leave it at that. Mm. If you create a safe space mm. for your kids to talk to you about things, they would have those conversations with yeah. you. But now when there is fear, when it gets to the point where they need to be honest about something that has happened to them, mm. they won't come to you. Yeah. Mm. They probably go to someone who is not going yeah. to help that them. That person yeah. will yeah. really, really you help them. will really help them <laughs> and help them in the worst yeah. way possible. Yeah. Yeah. And as time went on, the relationship between her and the mom, it wasn't, it, it wasn't the nicest. Yeah. And as, as, as she grew older, she became an adult. Her mom would definitely ask, oh, where did I go wrong? I'm just like, hmm? <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> and the truth is, sometimes... Parents don't know these things. Yeah. Now, a lot of parents are operating from their own trauma based on based off of what they had been through in the past, especially mothers, or what they've been through. And men or fathers are, are acting based on what they've done to other people's daughters or what they've seen their own friends yeah. do to other people's daughters. So they're very scared. I don't want that to happen to my daughter. But the truth is, there's no amount of checks mm. that you're going to do that is going to prevent people from attempting to do the same thing that you are scared of. Now, what you need to do is to create a space where your child can easily can be empowered. come yeah. to you. Yeah. Like you don't even necessarily have to ask yeah. any question. I don't you need to ask you. you. My body is yeah, like, oh, exactly. What should I do? <laughs> or I feel this way. Or I started talking to this boy mm -hmm. and this is how I'm feeling. Or this boy said something to me. Or this man or this uncle mm -hmm. said this to me. What should I do? Mm -hmm. Your sons should also receive the same education. Sex education is not just for it's your not, daughters. Yeah. It's not just for the girls. Absolutely. It's for both the girls and, and, and the, the boys. boys. Because boys are also picking up little, little things. I mean, boys get molested. Oh, yeah. But you don't hear them talk about it because to a lot of men, it is supposed to be what a sexual priority. It's cool supposed thing. to be a win. It's a cool thing. But the truth is, a lot of boys are getting molested. Absolutely. A lot of boys are getting touched in places they shouldn't be touched. A lot of boys... Are getting spoiled at really young age mm. and that's why they go to school and you find a five years old boy he's trying to touch another four years old girl mm. or a five years old girl or a, a five years old boy is going to school to tell them about something they had seen at home and another little boy who is innocent is learning that and taking it back home to teach his very own vicious. siblings. Very vicious. So it's like, a, yeah, exactly. It's a vicious cycle. So it just keeps going around and going around. It's little boys that spoil other little boys. It's little boys that spoil other little girls. Mm. <laughs> so how would you, I mean, if, if a little girl of five years old, we've heard that little kids have sex. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, when that happens, obviously there is no hymen being broken probably at that point. Mm. But has your child done the deed or not? They don't they do? <laughs> no, my brother. Have they been exposed or not? Absolutely. Let me hear your thoughts, Nama. You are raising four children. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's, uh, I mean, you, you guys have said quite a bit. Uh, there's, <laughs> I'm even just struggling as to what to even add to what you, you've um, shared in the conversation, but I just want to just uh, pick a few points uh, just to, as an addition. And it's a fact that just from where Jennifer stops, that basically there are three influencers in the life of a child. We have the influence from home, the background, the upbringing, what you teach the children. Then you have the environment, 
that they grow up in, whether it's in Nigeria or in the UK or in the US or wherever, India, Russia, wherever. And then you have emotional experiences that they go through. So these are the three core influencers in the life of the child. Now, uh, when it comes to the environment, in today's world, we even have an extra environment, which is the social media environment, that is teaching quite a lot, and depending on how much exposure that a child has. And when you think about these things, there's a lot for the 21st century parents to be concerned about or to have fears for. But if they approach it, like you had said rightly, from the place of fear, then you find out that everything that um, you, uh, comes from a place of fear actually fuels it into reality. So you find out that most times when, when parents say, oh, this child, though, you will not kill me. You will not get, uh, if you get pregnant, so, and then it actually happens. The next thing you hear the parents say, Shebi, I as if I knew. So it's like you already you already attract that what situation. you fear. It's, it's like come. Job that said, "What I fear the most came upon me." Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. You, you preempt it to come to the fore, and that's something that parents need to pay very, very particular attention to. That you are teaching a child, your teaching should not come from a place of fear, but from a place of information, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's where communication comes in very, very importantly on how a parent should be able to approach sexual concerns. Sometimes parents make it look as if that they were superstars. You know, growing up, well, almost all the parents came first. You know, so none of them ever did anything they were, wrong. They were all, they were all the best children. <laughs> you know, but the truth of it is that when you share even your vulnerable sides with your children, of course, per time, mm. the information you're sharing with them should be age appropriate. Yeah. When you're sharing to tell them that, look, in life, it's not it's not a perfect scene. You are going to continue to learn. Sometimes you might make mistakes. You might be able to avoid those mis mistakes if you listen to the wise counsel that you're given. But peradventure, if a mistake happens, there is a way out. So that fear is not what drives them. Because most of the time, in the process of not being a, a, a hurting daddy or mommy, they end up finding themselves in a vulnerable state that exposes them to the same vices that bring them to that place where they have feared the most. Mm. And a lot of the parents, if they were sincere with themselves, the driving force behind, oh, don't do this and that, is because some of them were... They, know, they knew what they did. <laughs> <laughs> they knew how to do it. They yeah. knew some somebody else's child yeah. or somebody else's daughter. So mm. when they're growing up and they now have daughters, it's like that... Um, that awareness comes to them and they begin to get paranoid and yeah. they are protecting and doing all sorts of so things. Sometimes projecting. you check it, ah, daddy, where have you been? Mommy, what kind of life did you live? So is your life exemplary? Because children need to be able to trust the adults in their life. Mm. They need to be able to come to you with their problems, with their concerns, tell you that, oh, and in today's world, where online, everywhere, it just comes up, boom, it comes up whether they want to know it or not, they're going to come to you with questions. We had a situation some years back, a child was trying to find out about sexuality. Mommy, what sex? Daddy says, no, that word is not mentioned in this house. Oh, uh, 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 mommy says, didn't you hear your uh, father? This one is not mentioned. It is prohibited in this house for children of God. At the end of the day, she goes to the driver and asks, oh, what is, what's this about sex? And she says, didn't you ask your parents? And she says, no, he, he, they are not giving me the answers. And then the driver becomes the answer. Says, okay, let me tell you, but it's going to be a little secret. I have to show so you. So these are the ways we push children out and make it possible for predators to be able to have access to their lives, be trusted enough to now manipulate them into doing those things mm, that, they, that we were afraid of. Mm, and that's absolutely. why we must not operate from a place of fear. fear. We must operate from a place of information. Absolutely. When you share with the children, let them know that, oh, these are the things that can happen. I mean, 
This is natural. It's going to happen to you at some point in your life, mm -hmm. but you have to be ready for it. Absolutely. When you put them through the process, when you put them through the process, they, by themselves, they'll come to that decision. Oh, this is a beautiful thing, but there's a time for it, and I would wait for it. Absolutely. It will be their own decision at Absolutely. the end of the day. Okay, let's quickly take a comment quickly because um, we're running out of time. All right, so I have a question. Um, I have a comment from Santos. Your topic, how should parents approach sexual concerns or fears, is an interesting one. Most parents project their sexual experiences to their children, and as such, they become overly concerned on the subject matter towards their children. Some parents who are struggling with their sexual life would think that their children would behave like themselves. Being overly concerned towards the sexually like towards the sexual life of your children would make them to create unbalanced, mm, unbalanced human beings. Human beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can easily find out that many children became gays and lesbians because of their parents' preoccupation with their sexual life. Sex education should be done in a free and open environment and, and safe love. With love yeah, as a base. base. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, so Thank you, Santos. You really summed it nicely. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to just add that. You see, the truth about sex and body. I learned... Uh, I, I learned it from um, someone and I taught my children how to take ownership of their lives. Yeah. You're not abstaining for, from sex because you want to please mommy. No, mm -mm. it's your life. It's your body. You must take ownership. So would you like to see your body in a state? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you are able to take ownership of your life, right? Every decision you take in life, mm -hmm. you, will, you will always be on the good side yeah. yeah because you are taking the decision not because you want to please anybody yeah. you're just taking the decision that is well, best because you have you. information Absolutely. exactly thank you so much ladies we have run out of time mm. sorry you mm. daniel Elo, you said you missed me yesterday we couldn't mm. take your message i'm sorry <laughs> please send another one i will take it tomorrow <laughs> thank you um jennifer thank you diola and thank you Noma. now before we go ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at way show africa you can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Parents are desperate for advice on how to talk with their kids about sex. So, um, parents, please go out there. There are, there are experts that can help you. Instead of leading from a place of fear, you've heard all of us today um, lead from a place of information and, you know, I am sure God will protect your children. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to you off the screen. Enjoy. <laughs>